Hello, and welcome to show number 2415 of Eyes on Success, a weekly program covering a wide variety of topics of interest to people with vision loss. I'm Nancy Goodman Torpy. And I'm Pete Torpy. And I think we get to go home with the feeling that we're genuinely making something that's worth our time, you know, so I think that makes a huge difference. And today we'll be talking with a company that really can feel good about the contributions they've made to providing more tools for visually impaired people to go through their daily lives. The Envision glasses and app feature real-time text recognition, voice controls, and hands-free video calling for people who are blind or have low vision, enabling them to access everyday visual information for themselves. We'll talk with Karthik Cannon, founder and CTO of Envision, about the glasses and the free-to-use Envision AI app. But first, for our tip of the week, this week's tip comes from Karthik Cannon. My tip is if you have the Envision app on your phone, you can go ahead and uh, trigger the Ask Envision feature directly by just long pressing on a document like a PDF or an EPUB and then opening up the share option. And in the share option, you'll have uh, the Envision It button and you can just click on it and that will directly open up the Ask Envision feature, which basically allows you to ask questions or uh, get, get a summary of the document that you just scanned and so on. So that's my tip of the week. Oh, that's a great tip. So many people forget about those long press functions and the context menus that can come up. Yep. Neat. Eyes on Success is supported by... Able One, a portable Braille keyboard for any smartphone or tablet for typing and navigation that has been used by thousands of blind people. You don't even need to know Braille to use it. More information is at www.imhable.com. That's I-A-M-H-A-B-L-E dot com. You are listening to Eyes on Success. Success, 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 success. Let's start by meeting Karthik and learning about where the idea for Envision came from. Today's guest has been with us before a few years ago, and today we'll be talking with him about some updates to the technology he develops and sells. So Karthik, maybe you can start by telling people who you are and what you do. Thank you, Pete, for having me over. Um, My name is Karthik Kanan, and I am the founder and CTO of Envision. I think a lot of you might be familiar with Envision, but for those who are not, Um, Envision is a tool that helps people who are blind or low vision to live more independently. Uh, It is available as an app that's there on iOS and Android, uh, or it's also available as the Envision glasses. And uh, you can go ahead and use the camera on the glasses uh, to take pictures of things around you, and it converts those pictures into audio. So you could use the Envision glasses to be able to read text, recognize faces, objects, and so much more. And similarly, you could use the Envision app to do all of that as well. Uh, The primary thing with the Envision glasses is that you can do all of the things uh, that you might do with the Envision app on your phone, but completely hands-free as well. And you can also make video calls directly from the Envision glasses to a friend or a family member. Uh, So that's the tech we build and sell. We've been doing this for the last uh, Seven years now. So I gather you're fully sighted. How did you get the idea to develop this tool for the visually impaired? Well, it started about eight years ago. Um, You know, I went to a blind school in India, uh, which is where I come from. The purpose of the visit was to talk to the kids who were graduating high school about what kind of career options you have, uh, you know, as a programmer, you know, uh, I was a researcher uh, slash programmer in the AI space, uh, which was at that time in its nascency, in its infancy. And I just wanted to educate kids there about what, uh, you know, options, uh, what career options are available in the field of AI. And uh, I just asked the kids there as a question towards the end of my talk as to what kind of problems would they like to solve when they grow up? Because I told them that a programmer is just somebody who solves different problems for a living, right? A researcher or a scientist is someone who just solves problems for a living. So I asked them what kind of problems would they like to solve? 
and uh, you know they all told me uh, you know answers which honestly i didn't expect you know when i ask high school kids what kind of problems would you like to solve when you grow up you usually hear really audacious ambitious stuff like uh, you know i want to you know cure cancer or i want to go to mars uh, i want to build uh, you know uh, this kind of a robot and so on and so forth but a lot of the que- the answers the kids gave that day uh, were wanting to read a book independently wanting to go out independently wanting to you know live by themselves right and these are very uh, basic tasks that a sighted person can perform without thinking uh, without giving it a second thought whereas um, i realized that these kids especially you know in countries like india they would spend a huge chunk of their time and their lives trying to overcome the most basic hurdles possible and uh, that was what you know triggered uh, you know me to start envision so you know me and my co-founder uh, we both you know decided that this was a worthy enough problem to solve because we saw how artificial intelligence was slowly getting better than humans at so many tasks and we thought we could take that uh, and put it to uh, use uh, you know in helping blind people live life more independently so that's how envision started Eyes on Success connects corporate sponsors with visually impaired listeners around the world. More information about becoming a sponsor can be found at www.sponsor.eyesonsuccess.net. This week's focus topic is the Envision glasses and app and what they can do to enhance independence for people with vision loss. Well, Karthik, before we get into some of the details of the Envision glasses and the Envision app, which came first, the glasses or the app? That's a nice question. So the app came first. And when we first started Envision, um, you know, we've always wanted to put our software or our AI onto a wearable camera. You know, uh, and this was back in 2016. And uh, at that time, there were no wearable cameras, you know, that was good enough for us to put our ai on i mean we had different problems right the first problem was if the if the if the if the wearable camera or the glasses looked good uh, and wasn't too stigmatizing it wasn't powerful enough to run our ai if it you know was powerful enough to run our ai then you would look like a cyborg uh, you know wearing it and and walking down the street you know you'd look like one of those robocop uh, you know style uh, glasses so we had this problem in the very beginning back in 2016 so we thought okay uh, let's start off with you know building this as a smartphone app because everybody has a smartphone and all smartphones have screen readers and so we started that in 2017 and we kept iterating on it and about 3 years later we got a chance to partner with google um and we used their hardware the google glass hardware to put our software on it and then that became the envision glasses so we started with the app uh, and then we eventually you know moved on to the glasses i thought the google glasses were not made anymore the google glasses you know were this were initially launched in 2011 or 12 and then discontinued a couple of years later because nobody found it cool enough to wear um and in 2019 google actually brought it back from the dead now in 2019 uh, envision won the google play award for the best accessibility app on android and so at that time uh, i got a chance to talk to them and they said hey listen we've been building these you know glasses and we're going to bring back the google glass but instead of selling it to consumers we're going to be selling it to businesses but uh, they decided to make an exception for us because google believed that we were working on something extremely unique and so envision is the only company as of today on planet earth where uh, you know where we can actually sell these google glasses directly to an end customer uh, and uh, all the other companies that sell the google glass uh, were selling it directly to businesses but we had the exception from google to sell it directly to customers oh great i didn't realize those glasses had been reincarnated in some form yeah yeah it is the it is currently uh, you know the hardware that uh, is that powers the envision glasses itself so when you buy a pair of envision glasses you're getting the google glass hardware and it's our software that's running on it and it's really big advantage to envision because we don't build the hardware ourselves but instead we get a great 
quality hardware, which has really nice battery life, which weighs only about 50 to 100 grams uh, and uh, can be used pretty much in any setting. And it doesn't need to be connected to a phone or a battery pack. And you could just, you know, pretty much wear it on your face. And it's uh, it's super portable, right? So it, uh, it's, it's, it's a huge advantage to Envision. Uh, and uh, we just have to focus on building the software. That's it. So you mentioned the weight of the Google Glass. That's approximately two to four ounces for our American listeners. Yes, it's about it's super light and uh, it comes with two different types of frames. One that, you know, you don't have to put any kind of lenses. Uh, and then we have another frame that's slightly heavier, sturdier frame, uh, probably adds around 10 or 20 grams more uh, in weight. And that, uh, you know, where you can, that's a frame where you can add prescription lenses or dark lenses in them as you wish. So we've got these two different frame types and it's a fully self-contained device, which means that you don't have to pair it with your phone. You don't have to connect it to some kind of, a, you know, a battery pack or anything. Everything is contained on the glasses and you get about five hours of battery life easily. So we talked a lot about the glasses and the app, and I assume there's a lot of commonality there. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what some of the functions that these devices and apps can perform? A big use case for the Envision app and the Envision glasses is being able to read text. So let's say you're out and about and you're looking at a shop sign. You could use the Envision glasses to quickly read what's on the display of a shop sign. You could use the, the Envision glasses to go ahead and read the ingredients or product packaging with, if you're in a supermarket, right? You could use the Envision glasses to read uh, the number on a bus, for example. Um, that's reading short pieces of text. You can also use the Envision glasses to read documents. So let's say you have a book and you want to scan a book. You could use the glasses to do that. And you can go ahead and use the glasses to also scan your utility bills, or you could use the glasses to scan um, any printed document out there, right? And lastly, you can also use the glasses to read handwritten text as well. So if you have a Christmas greeting card or if you have, uh, you know, like a letter from a friend, you could use the glasses to read that as well. Of course, it can't read a doctor's prescription. I don't think at this point anyone actually can. <laughs> but it's able to read all these different types of languages and, and scripts and, and different types of you know uh, ways of writing. Right. When you say it reads all of this written material, that's all text to speech, correct? Correct. It basically takes a picture and then just speaks it out to you. Does it help you find what you're trying to take a picture of? Yes, it does that as well. So when you actually turn on or ask the glasses to scan a document, it first helps you position the document in front of you correctly and then takes a picture. Now, all of the stuff that I described to you has been something the glasses can do for a long period of time. Now, last couple of years, we've all been really caught up with this whole chat GPT, uh, you know, thing, right? Everyone's talking about chat GPT and AI and all those things. And we've brought chat GPT onto the Envision glasses as well. So now you could be sitting at a restaurant, you could scan a menu card, and you can now ask the Envision glasses, can you tell me exactly what vegetarian appetizers are there on the menu? Right. You can have a conversation with the glasses uh, as soon as you scan a document. And not this is not just with documents. You could take a picture of any, you know, I would say setting or scene or surroundings and you could ask the glasses. For example, uh, if you walk into an empty room and take a picture and you can say, hey, uh, are there any chairs in the room? If so, can you point me to an empty chair? And the glasses can go ahead and describe the room for you and, and answer your specific question. So the ability to have a conversation with the glasses is something that we added recently and is available as a free update to all customers uh, who have bought the Envision glasses so far. So that's something that people can go ahead and use. There's a microphone on the glasses and it does speech recognition as well. Correct. So there is a speaker on the glasses and a microphone as well, along with the camera. And you can use that to have a conversation. Uh, you can also connect the glasses to your you know, Bluetooth hearing aids or any other kind of uh, Bluetooth headphones as well. And I take it the app has similar capabilities, except that it's not hands-free because you have to hold the phone. Exactly. So now one of the big 
I would say improvements that we've also made to the app is we've bought this whole asking, you know, feature, like the asking a question feature, what we call ask and vision, right? The ask and vision feature that was there on the glasses is now also there on the app, which means that anyone who has the Envision app today can just go ahead and scan any document. It could be a 500 page PDF. It could be, uh, you know, a handwritten card. It could be your utility bills, for example. And you can import it into the Envision app or scan it with the Envision app. And you can also ask questions back and forth about the document you just scanned. You can basically say, hey, uh, how much you know should I pay overall? And the glasses, and so the app will be able to point out in a utility bill how much money you have to pay. Or if you have a textbook, this is really useful for a lot of students. If you have a 500 page textbook, you could basically you know, ask the Envision app, okay, hey, can you give me a summary of the first chapter? Or can you search the textbook for a specific concept and explain that to me, right? And the, and the app would be able to do that very similar to the glasses. And that's the big update that we pushed on the Envision app, which is, you know, to be honest, not there on any other app. Uh, there are apps that allow you to scan one or two pages at a time and, you know, lets you ask questions, but uh, you can't do that with a 500 page PDF, for example, or uh, an, a novel that's got like a thousand pages. So there's no limit to the amount of pages that you can scan with Envision and ask questions. Can you import a document from a remote scanner and import it into Envision and get all of these functions? Yes, you can. You know, you can scan a document on a scanner. You can just send that over to your phone and then import that directly into the Envision app. And it's completely free. Uh, anyone can go ahead and install the Envision app on iOS or Android. We're there on both the platforms and you can just go ahead and scan it. Yeah. So you know that someone's going to ask, can the app do your homework for you? <laughs> yes, it can. You know, we tried it. So we actually had uh, one of the one of our, you know, beta testers who was a who was a student at the university here uh, and uh, you know, she came in and we when we were testing out this feature, it exactly did that. So she was like, "Hey, uh, can you tell me the answer to problem number 17 uh, in like this particular chapter?" And then the app would just go ahead and like pick up the problem and because, you know, we're using a really really smart AI, uh, it's able to understand math as well and can go ahead and help you decipher uh, math. So of course, it is not like uh, a shortcut to doing things, uh, but it allows you to go, it gives you an answer that provides you with an explanation of how to solve the problem. Uh, and, you know, if you wanted to solve the problem for you, you can just say, hey, okay, solve this problem for me and it can actually go ahead and do it. When we talk about electronic glasses, we usually think of either sighted people using them or partially sighted people using them for magnification, but it sounds like these glasses being voice controlled and all is perfectly usable by people who are totally blind, right? Completely, exactly. And uh, we have a lot of users at Envision who have been blind since birth or who don't have any, uh, you know, level of light perception uh, and they use the glasses, right? And we've built the glasses in such a way that someone who has low vision can use them or someone with no vision can use them as well. Um, for example, you know, I was talking to you about how when you sit down to scan a document, the glasses gives you guidance on how to move the document before taking a picture. Now that's something that's very useful for someone who's completely blind since birth or who has no light perception that now all of a sudden they don't have to second guess every time they take a picture. You know, the glasses will guide them on how to do it and do it and help them take a picture. Um, another update that we also released on the glasses is it also tells you if you're holding the document upside down, right? So that's also possible. You mentioned that you don't need to pair the glasses with the phone, that the glasses work independently, but I assume for some functions, you can connect the two to transmit information back and forth or perform some other functions? Yes, you can. So, you know, uh, though I said that you don't have to, uh, you know, spare your phone and your glasses to make it work, it is, you know, uh, indeed very useful to connect your Envision glasses to the Envision app. And uh, for example, you know, you could scan a document on the Envision glasses and then have it show up in your Envision app where from where you can read it in more detail or you could go ahead and send it to other people uh, directly from your phone, right? So the glasses and the phone are a great companion that kind of work together. 
I'm kind of curious. You talked about the AI features that are built into the glasses, which can be run independently. When I usually think of those capabilities, I think of running them on the cloud in big cloud computers with a lot of GPUs, and GPUs are pretty expensive. How did you squash that all onto the glasses? Well, uh, the the long and short answer is, you know, just you know, hardworking engineers. <laughs> that's that's what I would say. Um, but there has been a lot of research in AI uh, in the past few years that we have also benefited from. You know, the the research directions that AI is taking nowadays is how can we take these really powerful AIs and squeeze them into smaller and smaller devices uh, so that, you know, people's privacy is respected. Um, so the AI doesn't necessarily have to go to big cloud computers with GPUs in order to process them. At the same time, you know, doing that on device means you can go ahead and also reduce the time it takes to get an output, right? You can make it more responsive and faster. So what we have been doing at Envision is, We've slowly been taking a lot of the functions that require an internet connection. We've been building, uh, working very hard to bring those offline without compromising on the accuracy. Um, you know, when, when we first started selling the Envision classes in 2020, uh, I would say around 90% of the functionality required an internet connection. As of today, only about 20% or 30% of the functionality requires an internet connection. That's impressive that you managed to do that. That is not an easy task, I would guess. Exactly. I'm pretty confident that in the next year or so, we can almost get like 90% of the functionality of the glasses completely offline, which means that you don't have to worry about, you know, connecting to an internet connection and so on. I know you just said all it takes is smart engineering to create this product, but I'm sure it takes a lot more than that. How big is your team currently? So we're about 30 people and, uh, you know, uh, we're all based out of the Netherlands, a little town, you know, just about an hour from Amsterdam. And uh, of course, we have our team in the U.S. as well, uh, where it's, you know, it's a pretty, U.S. is, is, our, is our biggest market uh, in the world. So we're, we're, we have a pretty, you know, heavy presence there. I think, to be honest, um, and I'm not trying to sound cliche here, but I think a lot of the success that we've had is, uh, is, is because of the community as well, right? I think we owe a lot of where we are today and the impact that we're able to make with the work we're doing is not just with the engineering. I think it rests a lot with the community because, you know, it takes the community to give us active feedback. And, and, you know, a lot of times I've noticed that if we show care, the community shows care back to us. You know, it kind of reciprocates the care and reflects it back to us by giving us feedback, by, you know, uh, calling us on podcasts like this and, and amplifying our message uh, to more people. And and so I think it's a lot to do also with the fact that the blind and low vision community is probably the most accepting community that I have ever worked with in my entire career building products, uh, you know, on, on the web or the internet, right? I think uh, extremely open to feedback, extremely open to experimentation. And when we do end up failing, which sometimes we do, we always get treated with a lot of kindness. So I think it's, it's smart engineering work. Uh, it's, it's all the teams at Envision actually working together to make it happen, plus the wider acceptance that we have with the community. So our listeners are worldwide, and they all presumably understand English well enough to understand this podcast, but some of them prefer to work in different languages. How many languages is Envision available in? Envision is available in all the languages that your smartphone supports, um, and the Envision glasses uh, that's about, I think, 35 or 40 different languages on iOS uh, and about 60 or 70 different languages on Android. Envision is available in over 40 different languages on the Envision glasses. And uh, you can read about 100 different languages with Envision. So you put a pin on a map anywhere in the world, uh, you know, Envision is able to read that language, speak that language and understand it. Well, that has to feel very good and be very rewarding to be able to make such a big difference in the lives of visually impaired people around the world. Congratulations. 
Yeah, thank you. Sometimes I get I get told by the money people of the world, the investors and the financial folks that hey, you guys are working on on an in, in an in an industry that uh, doesn't have a great uh, return on investment. And I always say that it doesn't matter as much as the fact that you know we get to build something that has a huge impact on people's lives. And of course, and I think we get to go home with the feeling that we're genuinely making something that's worth our time. You know, so I think that uh, that makes a huge difference. You are listening to Eyes on Success. 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 Now for this week's final item, how to learn more about the Envision Glasses and Envision app and how to contact them. Well, Karthik, if people want to find out more about the Envision Glasses or the Envision app, what advice would you give them? So if you want to download the Envision app, it's a completely free app, uh, no limits whatsoever. You can go on to the App Store on iOS or the Play Store on Google and just search for Envision AI and you'll be able to install the app on your phones. Um, if you want to know more about the Envision glasses, you can go to our website, letsenvision.com, L-E-T-S. E-N-V-I-S-I-O-N.com. And you can request a free demo of the Envision glasses on the website. And we'll be more than happy to show you in person or online uh, a free demo uh, of the glasses for you to play with. Um, and lastly, Envision is also available on the desktop. So you can install Envision as an extension on your browser. Uh, so you could go uh, and install it on Chrome, on Firefox or Safari. Uh, and you can find more information about on our, uh, about it on our website, letsenvision.com. That's L-E-T-S-E-N-V-I-S-I-O-N.com. So if anybody has a question, how would they reach you? Uh, so they can just reach out to me uh, directly on through the website. So uh, you can write to us at support at letsenvision.com and uh, we'll have somebody from the team reach out to you. Or if you want to reach out to me directly, I'm on Twitter as well. Uh, and uh, or you can also just go ahead and shoot me an email at uh, kk at letsenvision.com. That's two Ks. So K K at L-E-T-S-E-N-V-I-S-I-O-N.com. More than happy to help and respond to you in any, with any questions you might have. And I assume Envision also has a social media presence? Yes. And our handle is Let's Envision, L-E-T-S-E-N-V-I-S-I-O-N, on Twitter. You know, we're very, very, very active on Twitter. And, and also the same handle available on all the other platforms like LinkedIn, Facebook, etc. And as our regular listeners know, if you missed any of that contact or resource information in the audio portion of the program, you can always find it in the show notes associated with each episode. And in this case, that's episode 2415. So if you click on the link to the show notes for episode 2415, you'll find today's contact information. That's it for today's show. Next week on Eyes on Success will be the first of a two-part series in which we describe a recent vacation we took to San Diego, California, where, of course, we took our smartphones, each of which contains a camera, but then we did a lot of AI processing to enhance Pete's experience of the vacation. So thanks for joining us this week, and we hope you'll be traveling with us next week. You've been listening to Eyes on Success, hosted and produced by Nancy Goodman Torpy and Peter Torpy. You can access the full archive of previous shows, subscribe to the podcast, and much more by going to our website, www.eyesonsuccess.net. If you have questions about anything you've heard on the show or have suggestions for future shows, send an email to hosts at eyesonsuccess.net. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.